should you have any uh, accessibility issues please send a private message to um, uh, host account or email webinars at ida-secretariat.org and the team will try and resolve that to their best of their ability. We request all speakers to kindly keep to times and to ensure that they speak slowly enough for the interpreters and captioners to follow. We would like to thank the logistic and communication team at the International Disability Alliance for their hard work and um, construction and, and enabling the participation of all of us here today. Let me introduce uh, Shruti Lata Singh and Asha Patel. Shruti Lata Singh uh, she is a 28 year old, have a progressive deafblindness, completed her bachelor's of arts and diploma in psychotherapy. She also did certificate uh, in food and nutrition courses. She joined uh, since International India in April 2020 and um, has been engaging with uh, stakeholders to advocate for rights of people with deaf blindness in India. She is uh, involved in right-based advocacy and also building capacity of family members and uh, um, fellow young uh, adults with deaf blindness on advocacy issues. She has three years of working experience as a psychotherapist in early intervention center for deaf blindness. In um, reputed institutions in uh, Ahmedabad and Ahmednagar, respectively, she is also an executive member of a Commonwealth Network of Children and Youth with Disability. Asha Petty will um, uh, co uh, will be the co speaker. Uh, uh, is currently a class uh, eleven student. Asha Patel studies at the Sharp, Sharp Memorial School for the Blind through the Budget Institute of Learning at in uh, Uttarakhand, uh, India. Asha aspires to become a teacher and artist. At the um, young age, Asha fell in love with the world of colors. Throughout her schooling, Asha has brought um, home uh, numerous uh, uh, first uh, awards in a state level drawing and painting competitions. Uh, she has had uh, many more uh, accomplishments in her young life, most notably in 2020. Asha represented India and her own top she in a one minute virtual event data forum uh, contest uh, titled Leave No One Behind. Asha was honored for her achievements by the Social Welfare De uh, Department of Uttarakhand in uh, World uh, Disability Day on 3rd December 2021. So let's hear from uh, Shruti Lata Singh and Asha Tal. Uh, over to you, Shruti Lata and Asha. You have 10 minutes for your submission. Okay, so hello everyone once again. And first of all, I want to thank the organizers for giving us the opportunity to present here today. And so Asha was supposed to, uh, to share about the dreams that young people with disability have and the challenges faced by you know, people with disability in getting employment. So now let us try to understand the challenges that we all face and we can break down the process of getting hired. You can let me know if my own voice is clear or not. So as first step, we need skills to create an attractive resume. And assuming that if a person with a severe disability is able to connect, is able to make a resume after getting an excellent training in Microsoft Word. So he, the next, he can move to the next step. That is the process of application. And this, you know, today, nowadays, applying this is through online platform. 
and the, the thing that we need to think here is how accessible is this online platform is the candidate able to fully navigate the website independently if they have any sensory loss then how they are you know, accessing it this is the question otherwise there will be no next step that is the chances of being called for an interview and before i go further i would also like to share that education is very important and by sheer struggle and the personal effort if a person with severe disability is able to finish their education then comes another long struggle that is getting employment and so i am sharing with you all how you know how the process of getting hired is so after the first two steps are done then we can move to another step the third step is about you know, the interview if by chance we get shortlisted a person with disabilities get shortlisted and the, they are being called to the interview and we can say that everything is going ill and the things are great but here too we need to consider how accessible is that interview whether online or offline are the person able to fully access those with hearing impairment may need the the interpreter or lip reading during face to face interview but will the company allow interpreter during the interview and if this interview is being held in online platform then no are the interviewers aware about how to make it fully accessible for those with hearing impairment like uh, transcription and other things i remember a friend once told me that he, it was very difficult for him to give interview without caption and had to spend 30 minutes had to waste 30 minutes of the interview trying to explain you know, how to turn on the captions so the time got wasted so now we move to the next point next step if a person is able to uh, complete interview and all the steps then you now a company hires them then we this to say the least it is great job by the company but again we need to consider here how safe and accessible the environment is for people with disability whether girls or boys then we need to consider about the safety and accessibility no and also colleagues at the workplace need to be fully supportive so that people can you know give their best and to those who think and who complain that people with severe communication disability have more freedom and laxity at the workplace compared to others with disability. I want to say that it is not the freedom that we need, rather it is the support that we want for our needs. It is our essential need that we get the support. It is not that we cannot contribute, but we need uh, that support to be able to uh, do our best. And many people with severe disability tend to underestimate their potential and they do not even give it a try. I mean, they don't even try to find a job having the mentality that they will not be able to cope. <laughs> At this point, they all need to pick themselves up and try their best. There was one point in my life when I thought that I will not be able to do my best. I will not be able to work like others. And But fortunately, 
today i am working in an organization where i am motivated every day but earlier i had no one to motivate me unfortunately now i have people around me who motivate me to take up challenges every day and so i am learning and taking initiatives and it is this is a big deal for me and technology is an enabler for people with disability but we need to be aware about how to use this technology now very few people are actually aware about how we can make our uh, lives much easier with the use of this technology and also this technology need to be affordable it is not like that uh, people with severe communication disability cannot contribute at the workplace it is just that we need to work in our own space with our own pace so for and for the better transition to a desirable environment employment it is better it is important to have skills that can help us you know to prove ourselves and and having an employment in a safe and accessible environment is one way but getting self self employed is also an option and we all need to focus on developing skills it is very important to develop our skills so no. support skill accessibility safety skills and knowledge with the willingness to work and learn are the key to success with this i would like to thank everyone once again and hand over to asha my name is asha i am from india and i am 18 years old i am deaf blind and studying in class 11 through indian sign language thank you for inviting me to speak at the global disability youth summit forum to present on transitioning to employment for youth with disabilities when i think about my own transitioning into employment in the future i think about all the inspiration i have already received in my life because of those who have supported me through our hard work together i have been able to climb mountains and achieve things i could never have dreamed of to my understanding transitioning and adjusting to the life begins at birth it begins with an understanding of who you are and where you are in this world all the different life experiences mold you into the person you become as you get older during school days through all your schooling you learn what you like and dislike as you get older you begin to recognize what your strengths and talents and additionally your weaknesses as a student with a disability life is much harder for us we have different abilities we face disadvantages and discrimination from the day we are born and even more so if we are a girl child we need people around us such as our teachers and mentors to understand our needs and wants to help to support us our path to a career of our choosing each student needs an individualized plan we need an effective strategy in place to face challenges slide change please to our teachers 
mentors and supporters. Find out our interests and abilities. Help us identify our individual strength and aspirations. Offer us career guidance and counseling. Tell us about all available job opportunities for people with disabilities, especially for deaf blind. We need accessible ways to be able to explore career path. Help us to find volunteer work, paid internships, shadow professional in different fields, attend job workshops and seminars before we graduate from schools and colleges. We have the right to equal opportunities. Please recognize our strength and help us to gain job experience. Please be conscious of the fact that we are already battling disadvantages. Please keep your hiring practice discrimination free. Ensure safety in the work. We will need on the job training. Practice equality, diversity, and inclusion. To the professionals and future employees, keep communication open. We have freedom to express concerns and give us beneficial feedbacks to improve our skills. And diversity of skills, abilities in the workplace increases productivity improves creativity and innovation. And to all my peers, with the right support around us, we can achieve our dreams and aspirations and contribute to the society we live in. It is not easy, but we must work hard. Recognize your strength and weakness. Take advantage of the opportunities that come before you. Have faith in your abilities. Don't let this deaf blindness limit you from achieving your dreams. You are not a star in the sky, but you are the sky that holds the stars. I dare to dream of a better tomorrow. I charge each one of you watching this, help advocate for at least one person with a disability to find a job of their dream. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Sotilota and Asha for your uh, insightful submission. Um, is Rohit available? Yes, Rohit has that. Okay. Uh, so uh, Rohit, uh, floor is yours. So good morning all. I am Rohit Changundi. I'm 23 years old and I live with my parents and my four sisters at Ambarnath, Mumbai. I cannot hear or speak from birth. I have completed my higher education from a special school in Dombivli, Thane district of Maharashtra. I did not face any challenges in school as my classmates knew sign language. However, I found it difficult to communicate with my family and people in my neighborhood. I used to try my best to interact with my family by writing on a piece of paper and a little bit of lip reading. My father used to support our family financially by working as a laborer with average monthly income of 15,000 rupees every month. We struggled a lot financially and my goal in life was to get a well-paid job in order to support my family and also save for my sister's marriage. I came across a pamphlet on, social, on a social media group where I learned about the training and job opportunities provided by Youth for Jobs. I reached out to the Mumbai Youth for Jobs team and got enrolled in their training batch. The training has helped me to gain some basic understanding of the different types of job roles, interview skills, resume writing, and other essential skills for a job. This made me better prepared for the job interviews. 
after the completion of my training my trainer informed me about a job at amazon for their first mile warehouse as a warehouse associate i appeared for the interview with confidence and got selected i was very happy that i got a job of salary of 11000 rupees per month and worked very hard to prove myself on account of my good performance i was provided an increment in my salary after one year of working i was also assigned a new role of mentoring new youth with speech and hearing impairment who join amazon last year i went through a rough phase during the pandemic when amazon asked employees not to report to work on account of covid restrictions however after the situation improved with time the restrictions were lifted and amazon again started rehiring youth for jobs team provided me an opportunity to again appear for the interview on account of my previous good performance i was selected again and this time however for an increased salary of rupees 15803 which is more than what my father earns my family is very proud of me that i'm working in such a reputed company and that i'm independently supporting the family i would like to express my deepest thanks to youth for jobs for their support thanks uh, so i'd like to hand it over to uh, a found the founder of youth for jobs ms meera ma'am meera ma'am over to yeah thank you um i think all of you may wonder how did rohit who is speech and hearing impaired get a job and then get promoted in his job so quickly so i thought today we'll just share the processes which you which we do uh, for all of you to understand so the first process what we do is we go we reach out to the community we reach out to the community because most of them have very deep mindsets in the villages of india that, that the people with disabilities cannot actually work so we have a communication campaign which gives examples of our alumni with the disabilities who work and uh, we tell the community that if you invest in the education if you invest in these youth they also can work and we have these trainings which allow them to get a job and be independent after they work so we do we also explain to them about the government schemes and the entitlements which they can draw this we do to all the opinion makers in the villages to the government and to all the other people who exist in villages uh what happens as a result of this is that youth with disabilities who are there they enroll into our training centers we have training centers which we run across about 27 training centers we used to have in 18 states of india which are run free of cost for the youth and where companies come and uh, pick these youth who are trained by us next please that's the first step next please so the second uh, pro the second part of the process is they come into our training centers this used to be there till covid hit us uh, when covid hit us and as the youth had to go back to their homes they all told us that these trainings these jobs were extremely important because they know that in times of crises the youth with disabilities are invisible so we spoke we had long discussions with them of what timings how many hours and we launched we launched youth for jobs online which um, has two batches one is the morning one is the afternoon batch of 3 hours each uh, what this did was that a lot of girls with disabilities young women with disabilities they would finish their work quickly in the morning and join in the afternoon classes if they didn't have a phone a smartphone they borrowed one if the signal was bad they stood near a shop where there was a good signal we also distributed smartphones to the really needy and we also gave them um a data card for those who could not afford it 
And these online trainings have really helped us to scale right across India, including Jammu and Kashmir. What are the trainings we give? We give them first all the skills which companies need, which they don't have because of their less education and being cut off from markets. English, digital literacy, soft skills, life skills, how do you manage your finance? And of course, job readiness trainings. And simultaneously, we also look at where the jobs are and give them an orientation to the jobs which existed. So the largest employer during COVID was e-commerce and logistics and manufacturing. So we oriented them to these jobs and got the youth jobs in these sectors, besides micro enterprises, which we do in a smaller way. Um, this really gives youth like Rohit confidence because at home, since they are just, a, a, you know, completely dependent on the family for their food, suddenly this gives them confidence that they too can interview and helps them to, um, to actually interview well. Next, please. Simultaneously, what we do is we work with about 900 companies now where we, um, where we basically prepare the company to recruit these youth with disabilities. We help them with sign language, we help them with the interviews. And at the same time, we do many services to these companies. These would be sensitization workshops for the board, for the supervisors, for the managers. Then we do a, a job role matrix telling them which jobs, which disabilities can be placed. We do safety audits, accessibility audits, if the HR policy is not an inclusive one, we help them to build a HR policy which is inclusive. And basically we give them many examples of youth who work in their sectors with disabilities, telling them don't hire these youth out of pity, but because it helps your business. We have several um, case studies which show how actually hiring these youth with disabilities actually helps their business. Next, please. Oh, yes, uh, sorry, I forgot. We've also uh, launched the beta version of Sparagability. This is India's first uh, AI triggered accessible job portal for youth with disabilities. Uh, we have amazing partners from the Prime Minister's Scientific Advisor Office to IIT, which is one of our best educa educational institutions. <laughs> in computer science and AI. So after this, we put the youth in jobs, we handhold them for about a year, and this helps them um, to progress in their companies the way Rohit has done. I mean, he joined with 11,000 salary, now he's moved to a supervisor to 15,000 salary. So this process goes on for one year, and we, and we do it through a alumni network, which we have. Uh, the geographical conditions and the conditions of most of the Asian countries are the same. So um, we have been sharing our work uh, with many of the countries. Our corporate services are already launched in many countries outside India through our existing MNC partners. We'd be happy to work with anyone. My colleague Swapneel will be the contact and he'll uh, give you his um, email. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thanks for giving Rohit an opportunity. Um, we really enjoyed the different sessions. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Uh, Mera Shinai and uh, our uh, Rohit uh, for presenting your insights, hopes, and also highlighting some hazards. Um, now, um, we will uh, have some questions uh, for you to answer. Anyone can reply, uh, and then uh, we will move to the, our third and fourth speakers. Uh, the first question that I have is, um, which 
article of the Convention of Rights of Persons with Disabilities does its state of employment. I mean, which article deals with um, employment? Um, anyone can, anyone can reply. I think uh, uh, we had a recent act which was passed. Uh, it's called the um, Right to PWD Act 2016. Uh, in that, for the first time, you know, the act highlights the fact that uh, every person with disability has a right to education and employment. Um, and uh, while it man, you know, it's increased the number of disabilities to 21. And more importantly, it also has suggestions for the private sector for the first time. Thank you. Um, my question was about CRPD, which article of CRPD, uh, state of employment or deals with employment? Which article is dedicated for employment? Anyone? Can... Oh, hello, I would like to share that. Uh, your question, Article 27 of the CRPD uh, yeah. deals with uh, employment. You can uh, just Google about it and get uh, more information on that. There are much, and every country have their own version of the convention. Like uh, what Rina was sharing about the rights for persons with disability act mm -hmm. in India, which, uh, which was currently revised in uh, 2016. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tulata. Um, uh, Article 27 uh, deals with employment, uh, which has uh, ensured uh, all mechanisms uh, that uh, uh, can ensure inclusive employment for persons with disabilities. However, uh, the second question is, what is the theme of this roundtable? What is the theme? Today's roundtable that we are attending. This roundtable theme is transition to employment. It deals or, with the employment and how you know, the employment can be made accessible for people with disabilities. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, as we are running out of time, uh, so uh, the last one: which sustainable development goals goal deals with employment or right to decent work? Which goal, sustainable development goal, deals with employment? Can anyone? Go uh, late and train. Go late. That's right. Yes, I saw one response in the chat box. It's goal eight. That's right. Uh, and yes, thank you so much. Uh, so we have done with our quiz session. And we are, uh, our um, next speaker is uh, Niluka Gunawardhane from Sri Lanka. Let me introduce her uh, first. She is an uh, educator, researcher, and disability rights advocate based in Colombo, Sri Lanka. She is a woman with multiple disabilities. Uh, she is aged about 37 years. She entered, um, she, uh, uh, she earned uh, an MA in disability and gender uh, from the University of uh, Leeds, UK. She is currently a visiting lecturer at the University of Colonia and the University of Colombo. She is a, a board member of Women, um, Women Enabled International and serves on the advisory committees of Aero HYP Sri Lanka and Learn Asia. So, uh, uh, Ms. Niloka Gunawardhane, floor is yours. Uh, so, 
Thank you, Reja, for the kind uh, introduction. It's uh, a real honor to be with you here today, looking at issues concerning the transition to employment for young persons with disabilities. Um, and uh, today I'm going to look at it from primarily uh, South Asian slash Sri Lankan perspectives in terms of barriers and in terms of opportunities um, in this particular area. So one thing that really shocked me when I was doing some background reading on transition to employment is that according to the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, 80 to 90 percent of persons with disabilities uh, who are in developing countries and are of a working age are, are unemployed. 80 to 90 percent of us and given how much our value our worth our dignity um, are connected with our work with our jobs with our uh, economic contributions this is for me a really shocking and staggering uh, statistic right um so what why is it that 80 to 90 percent of us in developing countries who are of working age, so primarily young people, right? Why are a lot of us unemployed? Uh, I think as some of the previous speakers have pointed out, there are assumptions that this is to do with incapacity uh, or uh, stigma or in terms of, um, you know, relating to our ability to perform, right? So there's a lot of ableism here. But the main thing I would like to raise here today in this particular forum is that actually transition to employment lies at the nexus of multiple sociocultural factors, um, starting with access to education, right? That's why when we look at Article 27 uh, on employment and work, we have to look at that in the context of other articles pertaining to education, pertaining to independent living, uh, pertaining to reasonable accommodation, right? And the other thing that I wanted to kind of point out is that this is also very gendered. So when we look at the UNDP statistics for literacy among persons with disabilities, only 1%, 1% of women with disabilities are literate, right? So my perspective, because that also then clearly shows this gap, right, in terms of the viability of persons with disabilities. A lot of us do not get a formal education, not because we have access to transportation, access to school buildings, right, um, uh, and other forms, access to communication, access to sign language, access to material in uh, a reader-friendly format, and so many other factors that leads by exclusion from education, which is often so tightly um, and so intricately kind of connected with our access to employment. So we really need to look at the larger ecology of access in terms of how we invest in the human capital of persons with disabilities is something we really need to keep in mind. In the previous round table, uh, a colleague from Sri Lanka pointed out how societal attitudes of karma, stigma, devaluation often leads to the exclusion of people with disabilities from education, especially women and girls with disabilities. And what then happens is that you are also not uh, subjected to or exposed to socialization of working with others, of having friends, of getting factors can also then impact one's ability to engage in uh, what we would call profitable work or productive work, okay? And I, I know this whole notion of productivity itself is quite problematic, but unfortunately that is um, a primary way of valuing people in, in many of our capitalist societies. So uh, then, you know, what is the kind of approach we need? I think reasonable accommodation is very important here, okay? But the problem is in, in countries like Sri Lanka, this notion of undue cost, whether it's, an undue burden, you know, from access to education to access to employment. So, for example, in Sri Lanka, we have a public sector allowance, right, of a 3% quota for persons with disabilities to obtain government jobs. 
but often what we find is despite this quota we don't have the infrastructure from the built environment to the um, almost organizational culture right the politics and ethics of organizations are not in place the fundamental accessibilities and reasonable accommodations that are needed for this three percent quota to be fulfilled that's also the influence of nepotism and politicization and because of these kind of factors we feel that you know the provisions are there but they are just very nominal kind of you know a paying lip service kind of uh, uh, arrangements so then how do we change that climate into a, a climate that's more conducive and more uh, realistic for persons with disabilities. Um, one of the other things in addition to uh, formal and or even informal education is the lack of adequate vocational training, right? Um, one of the previous speakers mentioned that uh, on grounds of access issues, a lot of persons with disabilities do opt to be self-employed in small enterprises, right? Like carpet weaving, making incense sticks, um you know weaker work things like that but often when i have worked with my peers with disabilities at the community level there is virtually no exposure to uh you know how to be strategic with business development with supply chain management uh to uh you know marketing one's products and things like that and so what you get is uh them producing things at a very minimal cost, not cost rather, at, uh, selling it at a very minimal price. And really in that sense, uh, a situation of underemployment or undervaluation of the um, different contributions to the economy, right? Um, in countries like Sri Lanka, and I think this is similar in a South Asian context as well, is that we now see more and more private sector enterprises kind of uh, under the banner of corporate social responsibility, CSR, looking at hiring more persons with disabilities. But again, this requires, like I said, that broader ecological, um, broader cultural shift, right? To, to really make this meaningful and not make this, you know, some kind of tokenistic uh, gesture, especially for youth with disabilities. So there is, uh, fortunately, like I'm happy to note that uh, through the university system, there is this increasing kind of propensity to promoting supported employment, so sensitizing employers, companies. There are initiatives like the Valuable 500 Company Initiative that's been kind of taken on by certain corporations in Sri Lanka for commitment to reasonable accommodations and inclusive employment. So these kind of uh, direction to move in, despite, you know, when we look at CSR, there are certain issues there as well. The other thing, like when we connect to the previous uh, round table on institutionalization, right? Still in many of our countries, a lot of us are in institutional settings. Yes, we may be making, you know, small arts and crafts, uh, things that people who come to the institution buy, but there's no real active participation in the wider economic process. So uh, really when we think about community arrangements, when we think about independent living, you know, that dignity of work, access to employment needs to be factored in those alternative imaginings of the world as well, um, right? So um, then uh, we move on to, parents of young persons with disabilities. So um, in our university, uh, there is a support group for parents of youth, okay, so 15 to 25 year old uh, persons with disabilities. And it's very interesting, like from uh, the lack of access to employment for their uh, young uh, adults, okay, so I wouldn't call them kids, they're finding safe um, and uh, kind of secure employment uh, because there have been a lot of issues of workplace harassment and workplace abuse. So how do we create these safe, conducive and inclusive workspace uh, environments, right? And there are again companies uh, that are increasingly looking at, you know, how do we change our, our corporate cultures? The other thing that these parents face is about socialization. When you are not kind of 
as I mentioned before, exposed to formal education, the opportunities for socialization is minimized. So in terms of disability sports, in terms of disability activism in Sri Lanka, I'm really happy to say that there are quite a few youth organizations coming up, create uh, greater opportunities for interaction and for collective action. Uh, and Article 27 of the CRPD talks about collectivization, trade unions, and although we don't have that as yet in Sri Lanka, there is kind of a collectivization of university students with disabilities. So hopefully that will pave the way as it has in other countries for greater collective activism in the wider society when it comes to young persons with disabilities. So really, again, just emphasizing the fact that transitioning to employment, access to employment, inclusive employment is so very tied to our value, our worth, our dignity, and you know, our flourishing as human beings and be creative about how we do that in ways that redefine independent living, in ways that refine, redefine our value and worth is, is really vital. Um, and so I think this is a great conversation to have today at this summit. Thank you. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for your <laughs> wonderful submission. But I wanted to um, hear more from you. But uh, as you know, we we are, we are uh, we. Uh, we have some time constraints, but yeah. thank you again. Thank you once again for your wonderful submission. You uh, mentioned all about reasonable accommodation, dignity, socialization, and you spoke against token um, tokenism, uh, which is uh, uh, like a cancer for us. I myself is a person with disabilities, so uh, I also echo with you. Anyways, uh, let us uh, uh, move to our um, uh, last but not least, uh, our fourth speaker, Mr. Neer Sresto from uh, Kathmandu, Nepal. Neer is an inclusive developer enthusiast and a uh, youth um, and a uh, youth with uh, uh, disability and um, and um, he is a UNICEF youth advocate for disability inclusion. He has been engaged in the Blind Youth Association Nepal, Kathmandu Valley Capture uh, as the vice president. He has been working in the disability rights uh, sector and in uh, youth leadership since 2016. Primarily, his field of uh, interest includes disability inclusion, inclusive uh, development, uh, accessibility, mental health, uh, uh, HRHR, se uh, sexual and represent, uh, reproductive health rights, uh, uh, PC studies, and youth leadership. Youth leadership. He has been a uh, person Seeing his master's degree in conflict, peace, and development studies from uh, Trivobon University. He worked as uh, the organizing team member in international conference such as uh, the Asian, um, Asian Youth Assembly 2018 and Global Youth Leadership Summit 2019. Neil worked as the uh, youth champion in previous organizations, including uh, Association of Youth Organizations, Nepal, and Visible uh, impact. He worked as a volunteer in the campaign run by UNB Nepal and UNDP Nepal. Uh, UNDP Nepal. Neil has also been working as the program associate in Diverse uh, Patterns Private Limited, a consulting company run with the uh, slogan, achieve more with diversity and inclusion. So Mr. Uh, Neil Sreshta, uh, floor is yours. Uh, you have 10 minutes to make your submission. Thank you, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank uh, all the organizing team for providing me such a great opportunity. I'm Nisilpa, a 
visually impaired person uh, currently uh, working as a UNICEF Youth Advocate for Disability Inclusion. And besides that, by profession, I'm involved in a diverse pattern company. It's a, a multi-purpose company. Let me start my presentation now. Uh, in my presentation, I will be primarily focusing on the present situation of employment of persons with disability in Nepal, legal context, uh, best initiatives, and the barriers that the persons with disabilities are facing in getting employment opportunities here in Nepal. So let me start my presentation. Uh, according to the census record 2011, around 1.94% of total population have some forms of disability. That counts around 500 people have some forms of disabilities. But the WHO or U, uh, World Bank has estimated that between 10 to 15% people have some form of, of disabilities here in Nepal. And about the uh, youth-related uh, disability, between 16 to 40, uh, 40 years old, 1.52. That accounts around 163,000 people have some forms of disability. And various research and studies have showed that people, persons with disabilities are living really vulnerable life and they are under poverty line. And in regards to the employment, uh, we have some very good uh, legal provisions such as we have the right to employment as a uh, fundamental rights uh, inside with the constitution of Nepal 2015. We have already signed and ratified the UNCRPD and its op optional protocol in 2010. And we have also the Disability Rights Act in, uh, formulated in 2017, uh, complying with the uh, principles of UNCRPD. And we have the 5% disability quota allocated especially for persons with disabilities in government civil service. And besides that, we have also the uh, Labor Act that uh, has mentioned that those who acquire disability during implement, they will get a special compensation. But besides that, there is no specific provision for uh, insured for persons with disabilities. So uh, let me share some data, but I will not go in detail. Uh, I have taken this data from uh, Disability Inclusive Development uh, Situational Analysis Report uh, developed by Institute of Development Studies, UK. And what it has mentioned that uh, the number of persons with disabilities, unemployed, unemployed persons with disabilities is very higher and those who have, got, who have worked, they are also getting less payment in comparison to other and they are compared to uh, dependent in other family members. And one research conducted in 2016 showed that 36.4% persons with disabilities were employed uh, while 54.6% person, person with disabilities are employed. And another re research showed that only 16 uh, was uh, only 16 percent uh, person with disabilities had have, have, uh, monthly income. And uh, when looking at the uh, those who got dressed, they are also not getting equal payment in comparison to other uh, research conduct by Prasai and Ponta showed that only 42% received equal salary. And uh, in regards to the gender, women with disabilities are, were found to have less work opportunity than the men with disabilities. And those who, have, who are more educated, they have the possibility to get employment in comparison to uh, those who have less education uh, even within the disability, com uh, disability community. And uh, we all know that COVID-19 and lockdown, uh, because of the COVID-19 and lockdown, more than 40% lost their monthly income. And uh, this data has increased because of the extending lockdown and the various muted variant of COVID-19 and uh, phase-wise lockdown. And uh, the sad thing is that we don't have up-to-date data ev evidence uh, how what is the situation of persons with disabilities in regards to the employment? However, it is estimated that around 1,000 persons with disabilities are involved in employment in government job, but uh, the number of in, uh, persons with disabilities enrolled in private jobs is significantly low. And areas of uh, employment, uh, especially blind person, blind and visual person, are working especially in teaching, music, uh, massage, street uh, singing, uh, marketing, etc., and deaf persons are working uh, as a waiter in uh, hotel, restaurant, and factory industries. 
And besides that, persons with disability, uh, physical disabilities are working as a receptionist, as a, a customer service agent. Uh, currently, they are also doing jobs like ride sharing. I think you have uh, the idea about ride sharing, bike ride sharing, scooter ride sharing. And uh, those, uh, like um, many persons with disabilities, are also uh, doing self influence uh, like. Uh, sewing, um, packaging, uh, handic prepare handicraft material, etc. And but the sad thing is that person with intellectual autism and other severe and profound disabilities have not received any sort of job opportunities yet here in Nepal. And talking about the, some initiatives, uh, actually uh, the Liberation Mission of Nepal in partnership with uh, Federation of Nepal Chamber of Commerce and Industry and National Federation of Disability in Nepal, NFDN has been running a huge employment project targeting to employ 2,500 persons with disabilities in uh, employ, uh, the job market. Uh, in three cluster area, Kathmandu, Rupandehi, and Morang district. Besides that, uh, various OPDS such as Blind Youth Association Nepal, uh, the Federation Nepal, etc., have been running uh, on the job training and other vocational training to make the person with disabilities enroll in job and make them self-employed. And besides that, uh, we have local governments and they have also been distributing budgets uh, for the uh, vocational training as well as providing seed funding to initiate some business or self-employment related activities. And another thing is that the government of Nepal is also running a uh, prime minister employment project. It's a, a huge project that we have been running at this moment and we have the opportunity to connect the person with disability in the job market uh, through this initiative. Now I would like to talk about the barriers uh, and I, I have uh, observed through uh, three lenses, employee, employers, and the socio-environmental perspective. Uh, and talking about the employees, actually uh, we person with disabilities don't have sufficient skills, especially um, job market skills that like uh, technical skills, vocational skills, what the market is demanding. And that's why we are not getting employee, employment uh, or jobs. And we personal disabilities even don't have a required technical as well as uh, academic uh, qualification. That's why they are getting deprived from getting op job opportunities. And many personal disabilities are also not confident about working in the uh, office because they don't have uh, uh, required skills. And uh, there is the huge barriers for the communication, no sign language interpreter available, no accessible inform uh, no information is available in accessible formats. And uh, especially uh, person with disabilities don't have career guidance, how they can de ensure their bright future, how what, th what things can lead them to which sector, they don't have good career guidance. And in regards to the employers, actually, uh, employers are not much sensitization, sensitized or oriented about the uh, disability and their diverse needs, and they don't know about the um, uh, their maximization of the diversity of the workplace and how can, they can gain benefit with the help of uh, person with disabilities and they, are, they don't have trust uh, that a person with disability really can work and maximize their been, been, uh, profit. And well, we have no proper job analysis in our job market. One needs to do lots of uh, tasks uh, in one position, like if there, there is the uh, front desk and front desk have to orange lots of office work uh, and because of the limitation of the disability one individual cannot do all the, the tasks that uh, they are uh, fired or they are not uh, hired in those positions and we don't have a proper work, uh, work accessible working in that way no um, proper sensitization or information about the reasonable competition and persons with disabilities are getting less family in the same level of job uh, which I, I have already addressed and talking about the socio-cultural uh, perspective, uh, we have lots of stigmas associated with disabilities, like uh, person with disabilities cannot do anything. They are uh, dependent, they are burdened, and we uh, person with disabilities are often discriminated, isolated, uh, humiliated, and they are um, uh, often treated badly. So that has made them to get deprived from the uh, job opportunities. Uh, and 
uh, as I did along with the workplace, we don't have accessible roads, accessible transport, accessible communication systems, and we don't have uh, a, a sign language interpreter, visual guide, or personal assistance, provision of personal assistance that have led us depriving from getting opportunities. And the government has not also not providing proper incentives and motivational things to encourage the employees to hire persons with disabilities. And we have also the limited job market. We don't have huge uh, scale of industries and factories here in Nepal. Now uh, I'm at the last phase and what can be done to ensure the higher level of persons with disabilities in the work opportunity? Okay, well, first of all, what we need to do is we need to uh, orient and sensitize the employees how the person with disability can work and how they can maximize their profit while uh, after hiding their uh, the person with disability in the job. And we need to uh, rethink and change about our job analysis, job description or job specification. And we need to focus on, we need to invest on developing market-oriented skills for the person with disabilities. Uh, we, the government need to bring the incentive provision like tag ex exemption and other provision to attract the person, uh, employers to hire persons with disabilities. And uh, we need to work on ensuring accessibility or uh, reasonable accommodation across the workplace and other public places. Uh, and we need to strictly implement the legal provision that we have had at now. And we need, the most important thing is that we need to have proper coordination and communication among the government, employers, and the OPDs. Only after being, I think we can ensure the better opportunity uh, for the person with disabilities. It is not uh, besides that we also need to uh, invest for the creating a good self-employment opportunity for a person with disabilities. This is from my end. If you have any queries, uh, please feel free to our, uh, chat or ask uh, using Q and A session. And I'm very happy to get this platform. Thanks everyone for this time for this opportunity. Thank you, over to you, Reza. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Uh, Nitschwester, for your wonderful and informative uh, submission presentation. Uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, our participants and everyone here who are uh, listening and enjoying this discussion Please participate uh, in the open discussion. We will start uh, the open discussion now. Um, it was for 25 minutes, but I think it will be shortened. Floor is open for all. Uh, you have heard from our speakers. If you have any question, please uh, uh, tell us and we, our speakers, uh, will respond to your question and also you can uh, share your own thoughts. Floor is open. Uh, there is one question in the Q&A, which is for people, it's about Sri Lanka. Uh, how has it happened in Sri Lanka that persons with disabilities are getting employed? Is it because of government interventions or a result of long-time advocacy? There is a need to benchmark there. Um, should, should, should I answer that question? No. Hello? Yes, I think it is for you, Niluka. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's that's like actually a really really fantastic question. I think it's very interesting the way uh, the uh, disability rights movement also has strategically engaged with the private sector. Um, I think uh, also uh, this emergence of CSR, corporate social responsibility, as uh, a kind of primary. Uh, aspect of a lot of the larger corporations in Sri Lanka. So you might be very aware of like Dilma, the tea company, uh, MAs that does like garments, you know, uh, and uh, apparel and things like that. So these larger companies kind of taking on uh, and establishing even supported employment divisions, uh, HSBC, Pete's Hut. So I can think of a lot of private companies and a lot of this uh, uh, increasing engagement uh, in um, disability employment is happening in the private sector. And I think you're right. I think 
there needs to be more documentation there needs to be a more like strategically oriented study of what's happening but uh, these are some of the emerging trends that have been taking place in the past five to seven years i would say great thank you uh, i think uh, you responded nicely to the question anyone uh, from our participants listeners anyone uh, there is another question uh, in the q and a uh, what are some of the job analysis mechanisms to adapt so as to include persons with disabilities and I think um, linked to that, someone has a question about uh, whether persons with disabilities deserve special allowance when they are employed. Uh, yes. Uh, from our speakers, anyone would you like to respond to this question? Uh, shall I share my thought? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll uh, primarily just try to respond to the first question uh, regarding the job analysis. Uh, I'm not expert in the field of uh, job analysis. However, uh, uh, as my, best of my experience, what I can say that, uh, you know, uh, we have, because of the disability, because of our uh, long-term impaired, we persons with disability have certain uh, limitation. And because of that limitation, we cannot do certain uh, kinds of jobs, though we use uh, our assistive devices or technology. So what we can do is that we need to properly uh, analyze that uh, what uh, the person with disability can do, what, what is the strength. So rather than being what the person with disability cannot do, uh, the job analysis or the employers can uh, investigate what the person with disability can do best. Uh, like a deaf person can do the job, uh, like uh, where there is no uh, frequently communication is not needed. And like, uh, you know, in context of Nepal, uh, here more, many of the deaf person are working in a uh, restaurant as a, uh, Waiter, big. Why they get get this job? Because uh, they, they are very good at uh, serv servicing. The, that's a they got the job. And uh, especially person with uh, visual impairment uh, have the high. They can give best in like uh, audio transcription or translation type type of job because they they, they are, their hearing ability is very perfect. So, and in the same way, like the person with physical disability can do the job where they don't need uh, more uh, mobility. So it's that's why they get, uh, here many of the person with dis physical disabilities are uh, ge getting job in a customer care uh, service. So uh, in conclusion, what I can say that rather than uh, what the person with disability cannot do, we need to see what they can do and we need to, uh, prepare the list and then we can assign a specific responsibility for the, them. So we need to sensitize these things to our employers and uh, uh, the more especially high level of industry, they, they, have, they have number of high employers and if they uh, properly uh, specify their responsibility and they can hire large number of persons with disability in the job. And yeah, that's all from my side. Mr. Saidur Rahman, I'm just going to unmute you so you can ask your question. I am Saidur Rahman from Kumila University, a recent graduate. Um, my question is that um, as a young, young, young educated, educated disabled, disabled people, in, in like many other South Asian country, we have also uh, also discriminated to attend the job, uh, not not because of my skill, but but on the ground of my disabilities. As you can see, as you can see that um, I am not able to write 
right because of my um, because of my hand disabilities but i am able to speak and use internet as well as i am a i am a young researcher in social science, social science but i do not get any job opportunities and what is what is the reason behind it as i as i see the reason reason can be can be psychological of our of our employers and our, our stakeholders they do not they do not want uh, want to get, want to give the opportunities people like us to express them express themselves in my my opinion what can the government and international community of our do 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 to uh, what we can uh, what we can say uh, to what we can say to to double to 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 force themselves to force force themselves to employ us as well as uh, trained us that's all my that's all i i can say thank you uh thank you mr saidur rahman raja this is niluka can i just make uh, yes. a few comments at this yes point? sure okay. sure yeah, sure uh, please yeah yeah and i think that's a really fantastic question because it has a lot to do with how we value or attribute value to people in terms of what capacities are kind of given prominence in society and often you know like especially if you go into academia it's the ability to write or uh, often when you look at leadership it's the ability to verbally articulate or speak and i think it really that that kind of discrimination that we face uh on the grounds of those kind of different skills and capacities that are socially valued really is at the heart of i think ableism and and really uh, from i think i personally think that from the point of education onwards if we are uh, taught to um, demonstrate our capacities in a multitude of ways so that there's also a greater appreciation of that diverse demonstration of our contribution to the world i think that can make a big difference like that's personally how i feel as an educator um i also just wanted to touch upon the us question of special allowances for um persons with disabilities and i think yeah, this is where the whole notion of reasonable accommodation needs to also be brought in to the picture because i mean at the end of the day we live in a very ableist world right and based on ableist assumptions like the previous question kind of highlighted and and that means that there are all these existing barriers to accessible trans transportation for example if you can't take public transport you need to hire like taxis or uh, and that is an additional cost and that cost is on account of the uh, inaccessibility of of existing setup so i think uh, often when when uh, you know so called payments are made to meet those additional costs and even entering universities like in our university there's a special intake for students with disabilities because of the recognition of the additional barriers faced by these students so i wouldn't and i often say it's not a special intake as such but it's it's an accommodation to the uh, to to accommodate for the existing inequities that are already there absolutely absolutely thank you uh uh i think uh, uh, all the questions uh, made in the chat box and uh, uh given a section is responded the last one is responded by niluka uh very nicely and um uh, we are uh, we have just only one minute uh so uh, there is uh, no scope to sum up all the uh, nice presentations uh but i just to uh add one thing that every if uh, uh, if i were uh, i were a man of 
22, when I was a man of 25 or 30, that time uh, I, I would say the same things uh, because our experiences are same for decades. For generation after generation, we are going through the same situation. So the situation is same and every generation sees some uh, hope and that has been re reflected in the discussions uh, of our speakers and uh, in the open discussion session also uh, some uh, thoughts and questions are um, uh, uh, raised uh, and shared that helped uh, us to rethink, revisit how we can ensure uh, employment rights for our youth with disabilities. So um, uh, last, uh, lastly, I would like to uh, thank again uh, our, uh, to our uh, speakers, participants, sign language interpreters, organizers, and all who worked behind us screens and made this historic Global Disability Youth Summit happen. Uh, I hope all our recommendations, findings will be informed in the Youth Charter and uh, our global leaders will take all these discussion points into their consideration and our people with disabilities will, uh, will enjoy inclusive uh, employment rights uh, very soon. Uh, uh, thank you once again from my side. Um, over to you and I think can conclude. We'll just be showing the videos and then we will be taking a break before uh, the next session. It will be for half, half an hour. So there are two videos. Thank you. Action six, address the effects of climate change. We recognize that climate change disproportionately affects youth with disabilities and we acknowledge their eagerness to actively participate in the sustainable and inclusive development. We commit to working with partners to provide accessible information and communications on how to strengthen environmental management and training of service providers, including in situations of risk and humanitarian emergencies. We will reach out to youth with disabilities and their representative organizations to encourage their active leadership and participation. Action 7. Make humanitarian action inclusive. We acknowledge that youth with disabilities are among the most marginalized groups within any crisis affected community, yet are often excluded from humanitarian assistance. We commit to working with organizations of persons with disabilities, OPDs, and other partners to improve understanding of the challenges youth with disabilities face during humanitarian crisis. We commit to advocating for inclusive humanitarian programs and ensuring that humanitarian labor markets at the headquarter, regional offices, and at country level are inclusive to youth with disabilities. Action 8. 